EBIT, uh, we have the Infosys numbers for you on the screen. Uh, the two numbers that we have so far, the EBIT has come in at close to around 8,242 crores. This compares with the CNBC TV18 poll of closer to 8,300 odd crores. At the same time, the revenues of the company have been a mild beat as far as uh, the CNBC TV18 poll is concerned. The net profit has come in at uh, 6586 crores. This compares with the poll of 6480 odd crores. The dollar revenue for Infosys this time around, 4,659 <clears throat> 4, million. So the big news is... We have remote us, yes. <clears throat> you know, the big news is the company has gone ahead and revised its guidance higher. Okay. The earlier guidance was 15 to 16% on the top line. Mm -hmm. The new guidance is 16 to 16.5%. Okay. Which basically means that at least for FY23, the street does not need to be worrying about growth and macro uncertainties affecting the growth. That said, even the previous guidance of 15 to 16% was seen conservative because it baked in a very minimal growth in Q4. Mm -hmm. So maybe the street has just adjusted to that. But 16 to 16.5% is a guidance revision on the top line, and this comes in as a positive surprise. No one on the street was expecting Infosys to go ahead and up the guidance, especially considering the macro uncertainty. Everyone thought that they would err on the side of caution, and this is a conservative management. So they must have 100% visibility to go ahead and up this guidance. That said, um, <clears throat> as I said, anyway, the earlier guidance was conservative. It's not mm -hmm. that they were anticipating, uh, you know, the company would have a very strong revenue growth. But the performance actually from Infosys on the guidance has come in as a bit of a positive surprise. Even the uh, dollar revenue growth, I think we should just get that up for our uh, viewers. I think the dollar revenue growth too has come in ahead of street anticipated. Margins are in line, 21.5%, uh, I think, is yep. the margins. <laughs> So the uh, margins are 21.5%. <clears throat> the expectation, of course, was 21.8%. percent slightly lower. Uh, slightly lower, but nothing really to quibble about out there. The EBIT, uh, also the operating profit, largely <coughs> aligned with expectations. The revenue, the dollar revenue is a little over $4,680 uh, million. And uh, this compares largely with our, uh, uh, you know, okay, $4,659 million. That's the dollar revenue growth. And uh, the CNBC <coughs> TV18 poll was uh, uh, slightly below that. But... Uh, you know, mild beat on the dollar revenue growth, the margins are a mild miss and a big, uh, uh, you know, uh, big positive, of course, being them having increased their guidance from 15 to 16 percent to 16 and 16 and a half odd you know, percent. This is mirroring uh, in TCS's uh, mm -hmm. numbers, where TCS also had a mild beat on the top line and a mild miss on the margins. And that's exactly the case. <clears throat> with uh, Infosys as well, where Infosys has reported a top-line growth of 2.3%. The street was anticipating a 1.5% growth. Right. So a beat on the top line and a bit of a miss on the margins because our poll of 21.5% means there is no margin expansion. Right. The street was working with a bit of a margin expansion. So both the numbers have had a similar uh, <clears throat> trajectory. The revenue beat, but margins miss. And that brings the question, right? Because travel costs are picking up. Right. They've started sending their employees for projects, etc., on-site projects. So will travel costs um, you know, increase going mm. ahead and will that limit or cap the upside? And the interesting bit is that while they've increased their revenue guidance, they've maintained their margin guidance between 21 and 22 percent itself. We have Prakash Diwan with us. Prakash, uh, you know, TCS ended uh, the day at, uh, the, the stock ended the day at the day's high before the numbers came by. The numbers were, you know, similar in quality to Infosys. And Infosys also ended at the high point of trade, ahead of numbers, yeah. higher by almost, uh, uh, you know, three quarters of a percent. And now the numbers are pretty right. similar when it comes to compare comparisons with expectations and uh, the, the way TCS uh, reported as well. The only difference being they having increased their revenue guidance. Do you think that will support the stock now? So I think uh, you know today's uh, uh, market movement for both the uh, IT majors uh, could probably also be seen with a uh, with a uh, ample dosage of index management. Uh, today was expiry as well, but yes, uh, very clearly what the TCS numbers gave us uh, was a comforting uh, picture that things aren't as as severely tough that we thought uh, going ahead as well. The commentary was fairly uh, positive and upbeat. And uh, there is expansion in revenue, Mangalam, which means that, uh, you know, they have clear visibility that uh, the revenue buildup would continue. There would be a spillover even into the next quarter, and hence this uh, revision in guidance by that uh, additional 50-70 uh, basis points. So it's, it's great news uh, that, you know, things are not tough for the next quarter also. 
which means that now we just have to worry about the contract renewals uh, for for the whole year of uh, calendar 23 and uh, possibly possibly this growth in revenue comes at a price where you may not have such pricing power and the costs have gone up from the last two quarters uh, of of this financial year given that there's much more activity around uh, employees doing more on site work uh, this travel the visa expenses so you know all of that would uh, probably be baked in uh but it it's definitely much more comforting and it's a reset i think this revenue guidance uh, to my understanding is a reset from what they probably were going into uh, uh the last quarter with a little bit of caution and that seems to be now getting corrected on, on the upside okay let me give you some more internals one the deal wins have come in at 3.3 billion dollars this compares with 2.7 billion dollars in the prior quarter the best that we've seen in the last eight quarters so the deal wins are a big positive this you know it's the best that we've seen in the last eight quarters and a very sharp jump seen on a sequential basis 3.3 billion dollars are the total contract value of large deal wins seen in the current quarter secondly you know this time everyone thought that tcs would outperform uh, infosys mm-hmm. in terms of growth numbers so the expectation was that tcs would have about um <clears throat> i think about a 2% odd constant currency revenue 1.5 right. 2% type of constant currency revenue growth which will be better than infi at 1.2% right tcs reported 2.2% and infis reported 2.4% so this is the 13th consecutive quarter where infis growth rate has surpassed tcs so <clears throat> again the question about valuation mm-hmm. reset right because infi trades at a valuation discount to tcs this as i said is the 13th consecutive quarter where infis growth rate has surpassed tcs and this time all the expectations were that tcs will do better than infi but that's not happened infi continues to be in the pole position at least when it comes uh, to these two um so we've got moshe katri as well joining yes in. we do have moshe, moshe katri with us uh, moshe you know while it stocks currently are <laughs> off their highs as far as valuations are concerned they're still slightly above pre covid valuations um with infosys outbeating tcs growth for the last 13 quarters as reema just pointed out uh, do you think there's a case for a valuation reset for infosys the gap to narrow that's point number 1 and secondly what do you make of the numbers so far so um you know from our perspective look uh you had tcs coming out with better than fair numbers you've had another us dollar beat by emphasis remember we we spoke about the fact that uh the sky is not falling the man continues to look relatively okay we were worried about visibility for the march quarter uh the fact that they raised guidance for the fiscal year is pretty big it means that they have that visibility remember we were worried that we're going to see some budget slippages which means that you're going to have less uh fresh dollars to start new projects in the march quarter but i think i think it's a pretty big deal and then the cv the tcv numbers came out pretty strong uh but that's also a bit misleading possibly because we don't know what which part of that is renewals and which part of that is new logos but all in all uh relative to the negative sentiment that we're seeing in the space for the space uh on behalf of our investors at least in the us the numbers look pretty robust uh and i think that in this market uh you know people will pay for that visibility that's how we kind of look at this uh but yeah i mean look the the march upgrade the march quarterly results and the fiscal year upgrade is something that we didn't really expect and i think that's a big deal mm. uh moshi thoughts on the valuations now for the uh you know the big boys in the it pack Infi trades at 21 and a half 22 times TCS trades at 25 times considering that Infi is growing faster than TCS yet again it continues to do is there a case for a valuation you know at least a catch up in terms of valuation between Infi and TCS you can absolutely make that case um i think that in a in a tech land um landscape that's really tough you know i would probably look at both names as 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 ownable in this environment large cap tech they're growing at least 10% plus uh i'm assuming that's that's the number that you're going to see for fiscal 24 as well remember uh if you look at the us based expectations for fiscal 24 you'll see about 10 11% for the space that's a significant downward revision for fiscal 23 
I think that's realistic, given the fact that we're probably going to go through some sort of a moderation in economic activity. Um, obviously, this does not account for severe recession. Um, and uh, the, you know, the numbers look pretty realistic at this point. Right. Uh Prakash, uh, you know, your thoughts on the IT space entirely right now? I mean, we have two major companies having uh, reported their numbers, uh, not as bad as feared, or perhaps just as bad as feared, and uh, nothing really, you know, which was unexpected. We have some uh, attrition numbers for Infosys as well. It's uh, reduced quarter on quarter, 24.3% versus 27.1%. And they've hired 1,600 employees. This as against TCS actually having uh, laid off over 2,100 employees. Uh, do you think uh, there is a case for looking at Infosys now more favorably than TCS and the IT space? So, you know, uh, Manglam, barring the premium, uh, the Tata premium that TCS gets accorded, uh, I don't think TCS, uh, the performance metrics were very uh, superior to Infosys. In fact, Infosys has been growing uh, at a much more steadier pace uh, than TCS in the last few quarters. And uh, the fact that dollar currency, uh, you know, uh, uh, growth itself is incrementally improving uh, with every uh, quarter is, is a testimony to the new management's you know, vision to actually strengthen their core uh, business rather than just chasing revenue, you know. So so that that is something which uh, is and then that is being reflected even in your deal wins. I mean, 3.3 billion is no mean uh, number. Of course, uh, as Rima said, you know we don't know whether there's renewals or whether it's uh, you know uh, new contracts that have already started coming in. But uh, the visibility that has given them the confidence to raise the revenue guidance tells you that things aren't bad for the for the IT names and even science numbers are pretty decent. If you ask me, I mean it's a small company; you can't compare it in the same league as these two, but. It tells you that probably the uh, the caution on, on IT as a sector is a bit overdone, and we'll have to probably wait for the entire month of Jan to go through, uh, which means by the time the numbers are all out, uh, you would take a relook uh, depending on the guidance that you get and, 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 and the commentary from most of the key management uh, uh, you know uh, players. Because uh, it will decide or set the tone for the P band uh, V-rating or reset if required. But at this point in time, IT definitely looks like uh, playing catch-up on the earnings part. So the PEs will definitely moderate and then become within uh, uh, come within reasonable bands. Uh, one factor which seems to have aided their uh, deal wins this time has been the company's one market share. Salil Pari, the CEO and MD of Infosys, says, um, <clears throat> we continue to gain market share as a trusted transformation and operational partner for our clients. So this deal win of $3.3 billion, which is the best that we've seen in the last eight quarters, may have a component of renewals, but it seems to have a component that in the vendor consolidation which is taking place, uh, Infosys has been winning market share. You know what this vendor consolidation just, mm -hmm. it basically means that earlier if I'm a client, I would have had 10 digital right. deals going on, right? <clears throat> and now I'm saying the times are tough, it's just easier, it's more efficient to combine all these 10 deals and give it to one, one person. person who has end-to-end -end capabilities, which is why the street has been betting more on Infosys and hmm. TCS, because they have end-to-end -end capabilities, they have the scale to be able to execute the entire gamut of work that any enterprise will need. So in the vendor consolidation, which typically takes place when the budgets are tight, yep. you have the larger companies which tend to benefit. The larger ones here are Infosys and TCS, and both TCS and Infosys have flagged off vendor consolidation and how these companies are winning market share now. It could be at the expense of other Indian IT companies, it could be at the expense of even global, uh, <clears throat> you know, mid-cap or you know, global companies as well. Just one more point which does indicate that there is a bit of slowdown. Now, the company gives you a digital component of their revenues. Hmm. Now, digital is about 62.9% uh, of their overall revenues. Hmm. The company has said the digital revenues have gone up by 21.7% year on year. A couple of quarters back, this number was 40%, 50% okay. growth. Right? So the pace of growth has <clears throat> So the pace up. of growth is coming, you know, coming down. One reason is, of course, because digital now is an almost like a third of its yes. overall revenue. Sorry, uh, yeah, a third, no, two-thirds of its overall right. uh, revenues. So that explains why earlier it would be digital and legacy. Legacy right. was shrinking, digital was growing faster, and that helped the company grow in double digits. But now as all the work, two-thirds of the work becomes digital, you would see some, you know, pace of slowdown. But uh, the digital component of their revenue growth has seen a bit of a slowdown. Moshi, any more 
thoughts on the numbers that you would like to add? Any trends that you've observed? Yeah. Um, one of the things that, that um, I think uh, a lot of people spoke about during the past few quarters has been the fact that headcount growth has moderated uh, in this industry and hiring has moderated. And the way we see it uh, has to do with the fact that a lot of these companies uh, really decided to have flexibility on their bench. Uh, and I think they've preempted a potential slowdown. Um, they've done a really good job in shifting the mix away from lateral hires more towards maybe juniors and on-campus recruiting. Um, and I think now you're at a situation where you have some room in terms of utilization rates. And, and on top of that, your cost base automatically is going to come down because of that mix shift away from laterals. So I think this is a this bodes well for margin for the space. This bodes well for that flexibility that companies will be looking for, uh, given the fact that you will be headed towards some sort of a slowdown during the next six to 12 months. Uh, gentlemen, uh, thank you very much for joining in. Thank you, Prakash and Moshe. And Prakash, we hope we can speak to you when HCL Tech as well reports their numbers. For those of you who've just joined in, Infosys has reported a better than expected performance in Q3. Revenue growth at 2.2% in dollar terms. In constant currency terms, a growth of 2.4%. Both these metrics are higher than street expectation. Margins are flat sequentially. That's a bit of a miss. The company has gone ahead and revised its revenue guidance higher, a big positive. Now growth for this year will be between 16 to 16 and a half percent. That's a positive. Margin guidance retained at 21 to 22 percent. The big positive in the numbers has been the deal wins at $3.3 billion. It's a substantial improvement compared to the prior quarter and the best that we've seen in the last eight quarters. Thank you for watching this show. It's a wrap. Uh, more news and updates will follow.